And in today's video, we're going to talk about the Pop K 3 Plus. Let's see if it's any good nowadays. Welcome to the Wicked Gamer, Hank Collector. In today's video, we are going to talk about the Pop K 3 Plus. And this is the Plus Edition because it got a very big screen. I don't know what about you, but I like the big screens. But I just wanted to talk about this mean little machine. There was somebody in the community who asked me, how is this thing holding up in 2019? I was thinking, man, that's a very good question. So I'm going to make a video about it. This thing was pretty damn amazing for back in the day. I don't know, you can buy a PSP and rebuild it, I know, I know, but it, that's not the point. It's a point more like I wanted to talk about this one. So, let's do a little overview. First, I'm going to need to charge it up because I think my battery is... Oh, my battery is inside. It's empty. So, let's charge it up and let's see what are we going to get. Alright people, so in this video we are going to do more like a revisit. This is not an unboxing, not at all, uh, because I already did the review and unboxing of the system. But I would just want to do a little bit of revisit and just to see how it's holding up in 2019. The Popka 3 system had got two versions. The 3 system has, let's say, one with the smaller screen. What I understand with the smaller screen, don't pay me on this, but what I can remember that it has, let's say, a better view angle. So the wider one was bigger, wider, but the view angle was less. But still, I really love the system. The First of all, I really like the design itself. If you look at this, and the comfort of the system was way better than the newer systems they are releasing. Yeah, what I already mentioned, the screen, it's not the best. As you can see, the view angle is pretty damn poor. But you need to remember this system was released a couple of years ago. It's running on this Chinese software. It is not running on the open Dingux like a lot of these systems nowadays. Okay, the analog stick. <laughs> oh, oh, it's really bad. It's, I'm getting the idea it needs some lubrication. But we're having the volume control, select start. Select for at an credit in this case. Volume control. The D-pad is a little bit of a bummer that it has four buttons. That's not a real D-pad, but we're going to test it out in this game. All right, so at the top we're finding an old USB connection. AV out. We have a CF slot so we can add more games. And this is the reset and the power. Two very clicky shoulder buttons, but the position is pretty damn good. To be honest, you need to press them very you need to press them very hard so if you're playing fighting games i don't know if this is very comfortable so at the back and this is something you don't see with every system nowadays some have a built-in battery but this one got a pretty huge one 50 on milliamps so i'm going to give you a couple of hours of play time the camera i'm not going to talk about it because it's all crappy we're having a mono speaker i'm very curious how it's holding up because it's a very tiny um, i personally really love to see in the future that they have two speakers so this is a little bit what we're going to get. Okay, let's do a little bit of gameplay. And let's see. The sound and the emulation is not bad for the Chinese software. Very responsive. The buttons and the game itself. Let's see. But the first thing I'm noticing with this D-pad, it is very responsive. I can do my move instantly. And that's something that you don't have with a poor D-pad. So even if it's not one big button or hollow, if I'm saying it correctly, I really like it. I can play and enjoy these games. Oh, sorry for holding it not in the right position. But but still, if you look at the screen itself, it's very colorful. 
Okay, let's try out another game where I'm curious how all the other games are running. So let's do a little bit of scroll in the menu itself. So I must point out that I have seen some, let's say, pictures or was a picture videos. So nevertheless, there was some information on Facebook, for example, that they have open links on this system. So it's highly possible to remove this software and upgrade it to another one. So that's possible. You need to open up the system itself. So it's not really convenient like all the other systems we have nowadays. For example, the retro game over there and the other game. But okay, we're going to just take a close look out of the box, how they are go still selling it nowadays. And uh, what I really like about this, this is something you don't see very often with these cheap China first generation systems that the menu is <laughs> working very well because some of them have that freaking annoying delay. All right, so let's play some games. Enough chit chat. Okay, let's see how Mega Drive is running. You need to hold it in the right position for the camera, otherwise you can't see anything. Okay, I'll get The game runs pretty fine, especially when you compare it with the end game systems. Hmm, it's not bad at all. Ow. You're going to get my bed. My bad boomerang. Do I see a little bit of screen tearing with this? Okay, we need to try out another game that's a little bit faster. Maybe we can see if this thing has screen tearing problems. The sound's not perfect. I don't see any weird screen tearing going on. So correct me if I'm wrong. I kicked him in the butt. The sound is not the best, but it is still pretty decent. Okay. Wow. This is really poor emulation. So as you can see with the analog stick, it's very responsive. It feels cheap. It sounds cheap, but the emulation is, or the emulation, I mean, the movement is very responsive. I can spam these fireballs and even, think I'm guessing, the super one. Okay, wait, is she give me the chance? No, she's not giving me. So, but what I really love about the system is that it's very big and it's very comfy for a long time. For example, if you're grabbing, let's grab the LDK. I really love the LDK, by the way. But if you look at the measurement differences, you can see the LDK is pretty tiny compared with the PUBG 3. So and if you're putting the Pocket Go on it, you can see that the Pocket Go is a little bit smaller than the LDK. It's thinner, and but as you can see here, it's very tiny. Okay, okay. if you want to, let's say, want to have it on the go, you want to have it very pocket, like the Pocket Go, the name says it already, it's pocket. Yeah, that's very convenient. But yeah. yeah, comfortable man. I think that is something if you want to play it for a long time, that is something you're missing out. All right, so if you look at the D-pad, yeah, you can already see it. The D-pad, these are one button on the newer generation of system. But again, keep in mind, I really like it. It's responsive, it does the job. So I think that is very important. Okay, so if you take a close look at the analog stick, the analog stick of the PEPK is feeling pretty cheap. I think you can say it's more like the first generation of analog sticks they were using. So it's very loose. I like that it's very loose. It gives this very good response when playing games like Street Fighter. And this is more stiff and yeah, it feels way better quality. So both of the pros and the cons, again. But if you look at the functionalities and the menu, Back in the day, they were focusing these like multimedia pocket systems. So you can, let's say, listen to music, watch a little video, or even use it like a microphone and make a horrible picture. So the menu, the emulators, this is what you're going to get. The games, you can replace them if you want. You can remove the horrible versions and you can always replace them with better games. But if you look at the LDK, this is where it's getting really interesting. They were focusing this on, let's say, 
more like an open source emulation station. You can add new programs, you can even replace them with other ones if they are out there. And again, you can add homebrew games, that's pretty damn awesome. So they are focusing these systems more like emulation systems. All right, so here a little side-by-side -side comparison between the LDK and the Popka 3. And here you can see already, beside the express ratio, the colors on the LDK are beautiful. The PS screen is beautiful, but the big screen is pretty damn nice on the Popka 3. I just wanted to show you this, that it is possible to play the game on the normal Xbox ratio. So if you really hate, really hate the bright screen, and you're thinking, I want to play the original size, then maybe this is an option, and that is something this old system even has. So that's pretty cool, don't you think? Just wanted to show you, because uh, a lot of people are, were complaining about the widescreen gameplay. But again, yeah, I can really enjoy these old school games. The volume, yeah. What can I say about the volume? It's not that crisp clear like the LDK, so there's a little bit of a bummer. But, this is what you're going to get. Alright people, so for the final conclusion regarding Popka 3S. I think this system, for nowadays, is still really cool. Maybe in the future they are going to improve the software with it and selling it like, let's say, a retro game or an LDK with Opadingux or another software they have created. But out of the box, it's not bad at all. And still in 2019, it's pretty good. But the only thing that is really a little bit of a bummer is the price. At the moment, I just checked it around $40. It can be a little bit cheaper. It can be more expensive. It depends a little bit where you buy it. But the price, if you need to pay this amount of money, you can have so much choice. And again, you need to ask yourself... No, not that. But you need to ask yourself what do you want? Do you want to have an, let's say, a landscape version? Do you want to have a Game Boy clone? That are the things you need to ask yourself. And of course, what do you want to play? That is also very important. Again, for the money, not bad at all. And uh, let me know what do you think of this. I really love to know. And if you want to see in more revisits, you can always do this on the channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell. And if you really like retro gaming, don't forget to check out the Wicked Gaming channel. See you next time. Stay strong. Stay positive. And stay wicked.